Hey everyone, today we're tackling a leak code hard problem. Find the count of good integers. It sounds a bit tricky with terms like, and but don't worry, we'll break it down together, step by step. Ready? Let's go. All right, here's the official problem description. Essentially, we're given two numbers, and we need to count how many numbers are what makes a number. Well, it means you can shuffle its digits around to form a special kind of number called a number. A number has two properties. It reads the same forwards and backward, that's a palindrome and it's perfectly divisible by one important catch. No leading zeros allowed, either in the original number or the rearranged palindrome. So just to recap simply, we get the number of digits and the divisor. We're looking for numbers. And number is called if we can jumble up its digits, like shuffling a deck of cards, and make a new number that is both a palindrome, reads the same forwards and back, and divisible by. The big rule is, neither the original number nor the final palindrome can start with a zero. Our job is to count how many different numbers exist for the given, and let's look at the first example, n equals 3, k equals 5. We need three-digit numbers whose digits can form a palindrome divisible by 5. Take 551. Can we rearrange it? Yep, to 515. Is 515 a palindrome? Yes. Is it divisible by 5? Yes. So, 551 is a number. How about 525? It's already a palindrome and it's divisible by 5. So 525 is also now 505. It's a palindrome, divisible by 5. It's good. What about 550? Rearrange it. You get 505 again. Since 505 is K palindromic, 550 is also. The final answer is 27, because there are several such combinations that work. Okay, how do we find these numbers? Instead of checking every single n-digit number, let's work backwards. Let's first find all the possible targets, the n-digit k palindromic numbers. How do we generate palindromes efficiently? Well, a palindrome is symmetric, right? The first half determines the second half. For a number, we only need to figure out the first m digits, where m is roughly half of n, specifically, n plus 1, divided by 2, rounded down. If we know the first m digits, we can just mirror them to get the rest. We need to make sure the first digit isn't zero. So we can loop through all possible numbers for the first half and build the full palindrome from there. Now that we have a way to generate all possible n digit palindromes without leading zeros, what's next? For each palindrome we create, we perform two checks. First, is it divisible by k? If not, we discard it. If it is divisible by k, then bingo we've found a k palindromic number. Now, the crucial step, we need to figure out which digits make up this number. We count how many zeros, how many ones, how many twos, etc. it contains. This collection of counts is like a unique fingerprint or for the digits involved. We store these unique signatures. Why? Because any number formed using these exact same digits like 551 and 515 using 1 and 2, will be we use a set to automatically handle duplicates. We only care about each unique set of digit counts once. We've collected all the unique digit signatures that come from valid k palindromic numbers. Now for each signature, like 1025s, we need to figure out how many different n digit numbers can we actually build using exactly these digits. This is a classic permutations problem. The total number of ways to arrange n items where you have repeats is given by n factorial divided by the factorial of the count of each repeated item. But wait, we have that quote quote no leading zero rule. If our signature includes zeros, we need to subtract the arrangements that do start with zero. We can calculate this by pretending we placed a zero first and then arranging the remaining n1 digits. So for each signature we find the total permutations subtract the invalid one starting with zero, and add that result to our overall total count of integers. Okay, let's put it all together into a clear algorithm. First, we systematically generate all possible n-digit palindromes that don't start with zero. Second, we check each one. Is it divisible by k? If yes, we proceed. Third, for these numbers, we figure out the count of each digit they contain, their signature, and store these unique signatures. Fourth, for every unique signature we found, we calculate how many distinct n-digit numbers we can form using those digits, making sure to exclude any that start with zero. 
Finally, we add up these counts for all the signatures, and that sum is our final answer, the total number of integers. Alright, here's the Python code implementing that strategy. I know, it looks like a bit much at first glance, but don't worry, we'll walk through the key parts slowly in the next few slides. The main ideas we discussed, generating palindromes, checking divisibility, getting signatures, and calculating valid permutations, are all in here. First up, generating the palindromes. We figure out the length m of the first half. Then we set up a loop, starting from the smallest m digit number, usually 1 followed by m, 1 zeros, unless n equals 1, up to, but not including, the smallest m plus 1, digit number. Inside the loop, we take the number, convert it to a string. We construct the second half, by reversing the appropriate part of the first half string. Then we combine them to get the full palindrome string. We also have a quick check to skip any palindromes that accidentally start with zero, which shouldn't happen for n greater than one with our loop range, but it's good practice. Next, once we have a palindrome string p underscore str, we convert it to an integer page. Then comes the check, p percent k equals equals zero. This asks, does k divide p evenly? If it does, we've found a k palindromic number, now we need its signature. We use Python's counter to easily count the occurrences of each digit character in the string. We then convert this into a standard format, like a list or tuple of 10 numbers, where the element at index i stores the count of digit i. Finally, we add this signature as an immutable tuple so it can go in a set, to our good underscore signatures set. The set automatically handles duplicates for us. Okay, the final calculation part. We loop through each unique signature we found in the good underscore signatures set. For each signature, we first calculate the total number of ways to arrange its n digits using our helper function permutations underscore with underscore repetition. This function uses the formula with factorials we discussed. We pre-compute factorials at the start for efficiency. Then, we check if this signature contains any zeros. Is count underscore zero greater than zero? If there are no zeros then all the permutations are valid n digit numbers, so valid underscore perms just equals total underscore perms. If there are zeros, we calculate the number of invalid permutations, those starting with zero, by considering arranging the remaining n1 digits with one less zero. We subtract this invalid count from the total to get the valid underscore perms. Finally we add these valid underscore perms to our running total total underscore good underscore integers. So how efficient is this approach? The main workhorse is generating and checking the palindromes. Since the palindrome is determined by its first half of length roughly n slash 2, we're looking at about 10 carat n slash 2 possibilities to check. For each, we do some work proportional to n, like converting to string, checking divisibility, counting digits. So the time complexity is roughly order n times 10 to the power of n over 2. What about memory? We store the unique signatures, and in the worst case, there could be up to 10 carat mena slash 2 of them. We also store factorials up to n. So the space complexity is roughly order n plus 10 to the power of n over 2. This is much much better than trying every single n digit number. Let's quickly recap the main points. The core strategy here was to flip the problem around. Instead of checking all n digit numbers, we first generated the potential target numbers, the k palindromic ones. We use the symmetry of palindromes to generate them efficiently from their first half. The key insight was to use the digit counts, or to identify sets of digits. For each valid signature found from a k palindromic number, we calculated how many distinct n digit numbers could be formed, carefully excluding those starting with zero using permutation formulas. This approach avoids redundant checks and gives us the correct count. And that's how we can solve the find the count of good integers problem. Hopefully breaking it down made it feel less intimidating. If this explanation helped you out, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more LeetCode walkthroughs and feel free to drop any questions or thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you're feeling extra supportive, the Boba Fund is always appreciated. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next video.